Hi guys, Olive here, here today with my fall book haul. Between all the traveling I did this summer and I went to a number of bookstores when I was traveling, and then the metric ton of library book sales that I've been attending, there are so many that go on this time of year, I've amassed quite the healthy stack of books here in my reading room. And like I do every single time the new season is upon us, I have gone through that stack and plucked out all the ones that feel autumnal to me in one way or another that reminds me of the fall season to show to you in a haul video today. Let's start off with fiction. As is usual for one of my book hauls, I have way more nonfiction than fiction, but I do have two novels that I wanted to show you. And the first one is actually a recommendation that I got from some people people in my comment section. Very early this year, I read I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell, which is a book that I sort of enjoyed and was sort of traumatized by, but I really enjoyed the writing. So I asked in a video if any of you could recommend where I go with her work when it comes to her fiction, since that was a memoir, a nonfiction book. And many of you recommended that I pick up Hamnet, which is the story of how a child's death from the Black Death inspired Shakespeare's play Hamlet. I actually saw Hamlet performed for the very first time this summer. I also fairly recently watched the 2000s movie adaptation. So I now have a familiarity with Hamlet, which made me all the more interested in this. I also want to move on to a big Shakespeare project after I am done with my Wishbone project, which I am very nearly done with. And I'm thinking that when I do that Shakespeare project, I may start with Hamlet. And if I do so, this book will definitely be a part of that. I talked about that Shakespeare project in a video I made about my bookish bucket list items. If you haven't seen that, I will link it for you. Because also in that video, I talked about another goal of mine, which is that I would like to go back and reread some books that I was not crazy about when I had to read them for school. One of those being Lord of the Flies by William Golding. I did not love this when I was in school, to say the very least. But now that I'm a little bit older, I feel like I'll get more out of this deeply psychological tale of British schoolboys being marooned on a tropical island. But speaking of psychology, moving us into nonfiction, I got a copy of Unthinkable, An Extraordinary Journey Through the World's Strangest Brains by Helen Thompson, in which the author tells the stories of nine individuals with rare brain disorders that apparently demonstrate just how strange all of our brains are. And in a similar vein, I also got The Man Who Mistook His Wife for a Hat and Other Clinical Tales by Oliver Sacks, in which the author tells even more stories of patients experiencing various neurological disorders that cause them to perceive the world in very unique ways. This is an extremely popular book. I feel like a ton of people have read this one. I felt it was high time that I read it too. Another popular one that I'm finally planning on reading is called Made, Hard Work, Low Pay, and A Mother's Will to Survive by Stephanie Land. This is a memoir in which the author talks about how she struggled to get by and raise her young daughter after leaving an abusive relationship and then finding work as a house cleaner. I know so many people have read this one and loved this one. I also know it inspired a Netflix series that I would very much like to watch. I'm assuming this book is going to demonstrate just how hard it can be to make ends meet in America. But on the topic of the US, I also got a couple of books on American history, which if you've been watching my channel for a while, if you know anything about me, that may strike you as a touch unusual. I don't read a ton about American history just because it's not my number one favorite subject. But these two books appeal to me for very different reasons. The Oregon Trail, A New American Journey by Ranker Buck is this author's story of how he, in the modern day, traveled the 2000 mile long Oregon Trail the old fashioned way. And the reason why I wanted to pick this up is because lately I've been playing a ton of the Oregon Trail video game. And I'm not talking about the original one. I'm talking about the remake. They remade it. It is so beautiful. I highly recommend it, whether you like the original version or not. It's just a great game. And playing so much of it definitely got me interested in learning more about the history. The other American history book I got is a big presidential biography called The Revolutionary Samuel Adams by Stacey. Schiff. Now, I know there are a ton of big biographies on presidents out there. I know people swear by them, like they really love them. They've just never really interested me personally, but I knew that I wanted to read this one 
because Stacey Schiff wrote it. I love Stacey Schiff. She does incredible work. And I will read whatever she writes, even if she's going into a topic I normally don't go near. A more general work of history I got is called The Badass Librarians of Timbuktu and Their Race to Save the World's Most Precious Manuscripts by Joshua Hammer. This is a story from the 80s. A librarian from Timbuktu started smuggling ancient manuscripts in order to save them from being destroyed. And not only does this book have an incredible title, but I also really trust this author. He wrote a book called The Falcon Thief, which I absolutely loved. I reviewed it for Open Letters Review. And actually, that review is probably my favorite review I've ever written. I had so much fun writing it. So I have nothing but positive associations when it comes to this author. I am sure this book is going to be excellent. Next up is a book called Lost in Thought, The Hidden Pleasures of an Intellectual Life by Zena Hitz. And in this book, the author talks about how much there is to be gained by having a deep interest in various topics. And then the author compares having those kinds of deep interests to a life spent in academia. And being a reader of various genres, I read a wide variety of topics. I'm assuming I'll find a lot to relate to within this book. Depending on who you ask, some may say that a cat is an intellectual creature. I may have a different answer depending on what day you ask me. I have two cats living here with me, one slightly smarter than the other, but both very lovable. And so I knew when I saw When Cats Reigned Like Kings on the Trail of the Sacred Cats by Georgie Ann Geyer at a library book sale. At first, I couldn't stop laughing at this cover, but then I knew it was coming home with me. Apparently, this book explores the connection between the royal sacred cats of ancient civilizations and our domestic cats of today. I also got two other books on animals, the first one being Dark Horses and Black Beauties, Animals, Women, A Passion by Melissa Holbrook Pearson, which examines the phenomenon of what is known as the horse girl or a woman who is obsessed with horses. Curiously, most horse-obsessed people tend to be women, and this author wondered why, so she dug into this topic in order to write this book. I'm not a horse girl myself. I think they're beautiful. I just don't love them to quite that degree. But I did just very recently do a video, two books on horses. And so I did have horses on the brain when I picked this one up. A spookier pick is The Red Hourglass, Lives of the Predators by Gordon Grace. This author actually has a background in writing about the infamous Black Widow spider. But in this book, he talks about several toxic predators that can be found just outside his door in rural Oklahoma. But on that darker note, I also got some books on death, which I always associate with this spookier time of year. First up is Past Mortems, Life and Death Behind Mortuary Doors by Carla Valentine. This is a memoir a la Smoke It's In Your Eyes by Caitlin Doty. It's all about this author's life spent working as a death professional. She's worked as a curator and a pathology technician. This author's first book, which was called The Science of Murder, it was all about the forensics that can be found within Agatha Christie novels. I read that book around this time last year, and no joke, I have not been able to stop thinking about it since. I wish more than anything that I could read that book for the first time again, but since I can't, I went out in search of her first book. Another macabre memoir that I picked up is called Personal Effects, What Recovering the Dead Teaches Me About Caring for the Living by Robert A. Jensen. This is a book about the difficult work this author does as the owner of the world's largest disaster management company. So he and his team are responsible for coming in after the unthinkable happens and helping out, helping to clean up. I'm sure this is going to be very difficult reading, but I am also sure that there's going to be a lot to learn from this book. This next book I'm going to show you I think would also appeal to fans of Caitlin Doty, particularly to anyone who enjoyed her second book called From Here to Eternity. This book is called Grave Matters, A Journey Through the Funeral Industry to a More Natural Way of Burial by Mark Harris. This book examines the more modern methods of so-called green burial. There are only two more death books for any of you who don't enjoy this kind of thing, and I've saved the most sensational, the most dramatic ones for last. This first one has a very unusual shape. 
It's called Rest in Pieces, The Curious Fates of Famous Corpses by Bess Lovejoy. And this book tells the stories of how famous bodies found their final resting places, sometimes via unusual or even disturbing means. And the last death book is a rather gruesome one. It's called Severed, A History of Heads Lost and Heads Found by Francis Larson, which takes readers on a tour of the dark obsession the West has had with decapitation heads and skulls. The next book is a science book that is far more concerned with the living. It's called Gut, the inside story of our body's most underrated organ by Julia Enders. This book answers common questions about our critically important digestive system, home of an uncountable number of microorganisms. But if we're talking about the digestive system, then we've also got to talk about the stuff it processes, which is why The Omnivore's Dilemma, A Natural History of Four Meals by Michael Pollan is up next. This book seems to break down Michael Pollan's concerns and recommendations about what we should be eating. I just read my very first Michael Pollan book earlier this year. I read The Botany of Desire and absolutely loved it. And I've been wanting to dig into some more of his work. Another food book I got is called No Recipe, Cooking as Spiritual Practice by Edward S. Me Brown. This is an essay collection about how cooking can almost be like meditation. And more generally throughout this collection, the author compares Zen Buddhism to cooking in various ways. I am someone who finds deep peace when I am cooking. I love to cook. And so as soon as I saw this, I knew I needed it. I also got a few books by or about chefs, the first one being Buttermilk Graffiti, A Chef's Journey to Discover America's New Melting Pot Cuisine by Edward Lee. And in this book, the author talks about how he traveled across the country to discover foods that represent all things American. I will be very curious to find out where all he went. Another book I got about both travels and a chef is called Hungry, Eating, Road Tripping, and Risking It All with the Greatest Chef in the World by Jeff Gordonier. And in this book, the food critic author chronicles the four years he spent traveling with a celebrated chef, trying to find new flavors from all over the world. And the third and final book I got that sits directly in the center of a food and travel Venn diagram is a book I cannot believe I found in this good of condition at a library book sale. It's called In the Weeds, Around the World and Behind the Scenes with Anthony Bourdain by Tom Vitale. This is a fairly new book, and it's written by the director-producer of No Reservations and Parts Unknown. In this book, he gives behind-the-scenes details about those two culinary shows, but he also paints a portrait of who Tony Bourdain was behind closed doors. From Food to the great compliment of wine, I also got Phylloxera, How Wine Was Saved for the World by Christy Campbell. This is a history of the near collapse of the French wine industry because of a tiny aphid species, but how it was saved through one man's clever solution. I have one more book related to wine to show you in this haul, and that is called The Wine Lover's Daughter by Anne Fadiman. This is a memoir in which the author discusses her complex relationship with her literary critic, wine enthusiast father. And to close out this haul, I have two books on art to show you. One of them slightly more serious than the other. So of course, we'll start with the unserious one. That book is called The Honest Art Dictionary, A Jovial Tour Through Art Jargon. And this book takes 300 art terms and passes them through what I like to call a tongue-in-cheek filter in order to give us lay people a better sense of what those terms actually mean. I enjoy art, but I admit that I am still woefully ignorant about the complexities of it, so this is just the book for me. And then finally, the last book in this haul is the only book of this entire haul that I bought brand new. I tend to stick to used books or remaindered books, but on a very special occasion, I will splurge and buy myself a brand new hardcover. And this book qualified as a special occasion. It is called The Grand Affair, John Singer Sargent in His World by Paul Fisher. This is a brand new biography of John Singer Sargent and his work. 
I am such a huge fan of his. I have several of his prints hanging up throughout my house. I know I'm going to want to take my time with this one. So I just went ahead and got my own copy. But that's it. Those are all the books that I've picked up recently that remind me of the fall season. If you've read any of these books, you want to share your thoughts. If you are now interested in reading any of them, if you have any recommendations for me based on the books that I showed in this haul, I'd love to hear from you in the comment section below. All the books that I did talk about today will be listed and linked for you in the description box below. It's all there for your clicking convenience. And also at the bottom of that exact same description box, you will also see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet. Goodreads, Instagram, The Story Graph, all the places I'm the most active in case you want to keep up with what I'm reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.